On this day many years ago, Jesus shared his last meal with the disciples. He washed the disciples' feet, he broke bread, and he hinted at the coming betrayal and crucifixion. His disciples did not fully understand the significance of this evening, but tonight we recognize how powerful and special this Last Supper was. That is why it is our Christian tradition to celebrate this evening with the gift of worship and the sacrament of communion, just as the disciples did on that night. Although we are unable to gather together in person, remember that God meets us at every table. Every meal we share is a reminder of the holy meal that we share during communion. Please gather the bread or the wine or the juice that you will need at home so that you'll have it ready for the time in the service when we will eat and drink together. This evening, our scripture readings are brought to us by the Bible Media Group, who have created LUMO videos. They are a visual translation of the four Gospels that have been specifically designed for congregations and study groups to deeply engage with the scripture. They are breathtaking, live-action footage, coupled with word-for-word scripture from the four Gospels. They paint an authentic portrait of the life of Christ. And so this evening, on this Maundy Thursday, we invite you to take a seat at the table and imagine with us the Last Supper with Jesus. Join me in our call to worship. We are Jesus' disciples, following him even as he moves toward the cross, even as he wraps a towel around his waist, even as he kneels to wash the filth from the feet of his friends. We are Jesus' disciples, longing to be faithful even as the night grows dark, even as betrayers loom, even as the powers that oppose the way of Christ press in around us. We are Jesus' disciples. Welcome to the table to eat the bread of heaven and drink from the cup of new life. Even as anxious questions arise, even as we cannot fully understand what lies before. We are Jesus' disciples struggling to love others even as Jesus loved us. We are Jesus' disciples here to worship God, creator, redeemer, sustainer. Amen. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel round his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet drying them with the towel that was wrapped round him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you for he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said, 
not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. I am not referring to all of you. I know those I have chosen. But this is to fulfill this passage of scripture. He who shared my bread has turned against me.
After he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, Very truly I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another, at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, Ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then, dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. So Jesus told him, what you're about to do, do quickly. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the festival or to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out and it was night. The following song is one you probably have not heard before in church, but it's a Grammy award-winning song that came out about seven years ago, and for some reason I happened to hear it about the time that I was working on a Monday Thursday service, and it suddenly struck me these words were perfect because they fit exactly the kind of situation we believe Judas found himself in. So listen very carefully to these lyrics to say something.
say something. Let us pray. After Judas was gone, Jesus said, I give you a new commandment. Love one another. Just as I have loved you, so you must also love each other. This is how everyone will know that you are my disciples, when you love each other. As we pray together, remember we have not been perfect in showing Christ's love. And be sure to open your heart to God's forgiveness. Gracious God, as those who strive to follow Jesus and are living and to trust your power in our dying, we gather to reflect upon the life that ended on a cross. We recognize in ourselves the strengths and weaknesses of Jesus' disciples. Although they loved him, they disappointed and failed him. And yet, gathering with these imperfect friends at this last meal, Jesus washed their feet in service and then extended the bread and cup to each. Jesus called them to love one another and invited them to share in his very life and in his acceptance of the road ahead. We are humbled, honored, and inspired by the deep love Christ extended to the world. And we take seriously the calling to be the body of Christ today. Forgive us when we disappoint and fail you, Lord, and guide us back to a place of trust and faithful living. Grant us to see the world as you see it, with love and compassion for each creature and all of your creation. Amen. Jesus said, I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. And having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The good news is this. In Christ, we are loved and we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. On the first day of the Festival of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time is near. 
I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus told them, this very night, you will all fall away on account of me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. And this is why every time we celebrate this communion, we say these are similar words. On the night of his arrest, Jesus was at a meal with his friends. And after giving thanks to God, he took the bread and broke it. And he gave it to them and said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the renewed covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink all of it. And whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, remember that we are proclaiming the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. Friends, we are gathered at our Lord's table. Take and eat.
Please pray with me. Most holy God, we have come to this table that you have made with gratitude in our hearts for the way that you have transformed our lives through the power of your unfailing love. We are humbled as we gather at this table on this night especially when we remember the sacrifice that you made for us, the sorrow that you carried in your heart that burned with the flame of love unending. Most holy God, as we have received this gift of the bread and the cup, we pray that we take them into our bodies as you send your spirit into our hearts, that we might continue your work out into the world, sharing your story of love, your amazing sacrifice for all. Amen. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? he asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, 
and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man, arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, do what you came for, friend. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him. For all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father, and he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? In that hour, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place, that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Even in our darkest hour, who we are. We remember that Christ is always with us. And we remember that on this night, we were taught how to love. On this night, eternity begins and the fullness of God's reign begins to spill over into our lives. On this night, give yourself for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, love in the name of the one who loved you until the end. It all begins and ends and begins again with love. Amen. Self-talk. 